Most eschatologies. It's just that, that okay, the, eschatology. The... End times. We're talking end times. Sam, I'm going to help Sam get his facts straight. It's fine. I want to hear what Sam has to say about this later. If you're man enough to come on and talk to me, unless you're already surrendering. Wheels come off totally, right? No. That's in, on some but levels the best not. thing that's ever going to happen because it's it's showing you that right. that that. that, that that yeah. in this case, Jesus is going to come back and throw the sinners into a lake of fire. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. The facts are incorrect. Jesus is going to come back and he's going to make sure we finally get rid of employment. And it's going to be so awesome. Probably a lot of open source technology. Linux will probably still be around because I love programming in Linux. Okay, whatever, however that works. He's going to make stuff so awesome that, that they're going to look back on our days of celebrating employment as being horrible, darker than the darkest ages because they're going to be so awesome. That's what Jesus comes back to do. After that, God lets the devil out. The devil goes out and proves to be a fool like he always is. And he goes and gets a bunch of nincompoots to all of a sudden decide that they're going to find something to complain about in a world so wonderful that employment is, is, is despised. And they're going to rebel and God's going to say, that's it. You guys aren't disagreeing with me because you really think I'm wrong. You guys are disagreeing with me because you just want to complain about something. And we're going to see every eye who's ever, everyone that's ever lived is going to be there. Every knee is going to bow because they're going to know who God is because they're going to see him. And that's when the lake of fire shows up. And the lake of fire going there is about the book of life. That's another topic. This is why fundamentalism always has an edge over more, quote, more sophisticated. Fundamentalism is a thing to talk about. Fundamentalism, fundamentalism has multiple definitions. But what he means by fundamentalism here, for, for generally, we're going to talk about fundamentalism in another episode. Fundamentalism means you've got super simple theology. Now, there are good reasons for that, but he doesn't talk about those. I don't think he really knows about them. We're going to talk about it. But... Uh, fundamentalism is, is hyper simple theology. It may not be simpleton. It might be simple smart. It might be minimalist. It's all, fundamentalism is minimalist theology, which can be a good thing. The problem is when you're teaching minimalist theology to lazy people that don't learn how to study the book on their own and know what it means. They're just believing everything the pastor says. You give, you give simple theology to those guys, they go become these extreme radicals and it forms a fundamentalist culture, which is a whole different thing from fundamentalism. It's a fundamentalism culture. And that is terrible and horrible. And that's what he's talking about, the Bible thumpers in the South, you know, dweebs, idiots down there. He's right. I wouldn't say that in a debate because I want to be able to prove points, not just use opinions. But I agree with his opinion. And I just don't agree that he said it and I would stop him from saying it. But um, I forgot what I was saying, and I'm tired, and I'm going to let him continue. Sophisticated theology, because yeah, sophisticated the, theology. The sophisticated theology is, in, He's got a good in point most here, cases, listen. inspired by a a more and more modern recognition that well, we can't read it. No, you're talking about you're you're talking about throwing out the old text, and in and, and I think Sam. With, with more sophisticated theology, we interpret the past in the context of the past, and we look at the present, we say, praise God and Jesus that we don't live in that anymore. That was leading us up to where we are now. It's not that we're going to look back up here, and God was an idiot back then because of what the idiot slaves that God didn't ask them, not idiot slaves, excuse me, because of the idiot slavers, what they were doing, that we're going to superimpose that on God. No, 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 no. God was brilliant back there. He brought us up through those dark times to now and praise him. We don't need to do those things that were need necessary at the time. That's sophisticated hermeneutics, Bible study methods, which is the foundation of sophisticated theology, as you say. But it's not about looking back with contempt and saying that we're better than God was. It's about looking back and saying God was right to bring us here. And now that we're here, we're not going to, we don't need to do that anymore. That's sophisticated hermeneutics and theology. And that's your stronger argument, Sam. And if you said that, Sam, your audience would agree with you because they like you. Literally, because it either makes no sense or it makes barbaric sense. Right. right? So you can't take it literally absent of its historical situation. But in its historical situation, it does prove literally. Rob Bell proved this. Rob Bell at Mars Hill, I would go there, he was 40 minutes away. 
Rob Bell would, would talk about context for 40 minutes, just historical context. This is Greece and see this is okay. And this here. and then he'd just pull out the Bible and read it. And it made total sense. Like you'd never seen before. Rob would do this. It's brilliant. You can take the Bible literally. The problem with taking the Bible literally is you're superimposing your present day historical situation on what's happening in those times, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. I'm sounding like Carl Sagan. You have to get away from the literal. No, you have to get away from the literal or figurative language if it's poetry. You have to get away from any interpretation apart from context, historical context that you're not even talking about at all. You're saying nothing, Sam. And Jordan, you're not either.